This is the 1980 Zenith 19 inch black and white TV. This was a Craigslist find and from the store we got, it's been in a barn since like the 90s. It's, I wiped it down once, but as you see, it has mud all over it. Very filthy. Uh, I just plugged it in and we're gonna see what happens for the first time, see what it does. Doing something. You put the cauldron on to boil. Well, maybe I have to put someone and get a job too, Aunt Lily. Oh, no. No, no, you need an education. You'd be surprised at the Nothing. number of men who marry a girl for her brains. Why is it work hard at your job? Very easy. Why, well, I could read palms with my eyes closed. Ramon is very pleased with my work. Ramon? He's the owner of the tea room. Well, what is Ramon? He looks a little bit like Harry Grant. Poor man. Before your Uncle Herb. Very dirty tuner. It's starting to do something. Well, so far this is diagnosis on first power up. I actually have to have the brightness up almost all the way for it to produce a raster. But we have audio at least, and the picture lights up. So it just looks like some bad connect, you know, dirty connections, or I'm sorry, dirty uh, tuner, dirty everything. So I'll leave it on for a little bit to see if it does anything different. Yeah, something's up because it's only on channel three, the you converter box in. It's picking up audio on every yes, channel. She's never been somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the back as found, antenna's intact, everything's intact. Uh, February 1980. This is the model number M192W. It, uh, it's made in Taiwan by Zenith Taiwan Corp. Uh, same as the little, it seems like all their portable sets around this time came out from there, but it's still the same Zenith, which is good. Uh, let's get it apart. Here's the back cover, first time taken off. Has a little diagram here. Uh, X-ray ray warning. And this is the chassis as found. It has a Foster speaker in it with a date code of 8001. And all the date codes match on here. So let's get busy. Yeah, I tested uh, out the CRT on this set with the Sencor CR7000. It has a 12.6 volt heater. So here we go. Mm, G1 shorts, good. Heater to cathode shorts, good. Now let's see. Whoa, like instant cutoff. Has a negative 20 volt bias. I would say this too is 100%. Let's do, let's do emissions life. It's staying 100%. It ain't even moving. This is a low hour set. Looks like it bought it, used it for a little bit, and it ended up in a barn for the rest of its life. It's not moving at all. Yep. It's totally 100%. So, yeah, and um, go ahead and pan towards the TV for a second. This is what it looks like all cleaned up. And and uh, yeah, it's just the low hour set that unfortunately got put away for decades. But that's not unfortunate. That means it's it's good. I just meant it never got to really get used. Is what I was trying to say. Well, guys, this is what it looks like 
after the full cleanup. So I was reviewing the video on this and for one frame while I was trying to work the tuner, I got signal to come through. So that this shows me is just a dirty tuner. So everything's been deoxided and um, we're gonna give this thing a whirl. And this is what the TV looks like pre-detailing. Despite what it looked like, it's in really good shape. And one thing I also suspect, and we'll find out if we get an image, notice it says black level in contrast, not brightness in contrast. If it's like my 1984 ZF 12-inch black and white TV of digital tuning, I think this has full DC restoration. We'll find out. Okay, let's see what we got. We have an image. Yeah, I know exactly what I did. Um, this bracket here, uh, I had flipped upside down. No biggie, but that's just for some reason that was like the resting position it was in. And so the brightness and contrast pots were backwards on the front and no big deal. So I just flipped the bracket back around. We're good to go now. Warming up, warming up. Looks good. Let's see what we got now. Yeah, there we go. There's your brightness. Yeah, it's behaving like it has full DC restoration. Let's take a look here. I mean, those are, I didn't touch any of the controls yet. I noticed the width is a bit much, you know, it's kind of pushing that off the screen a little bit, but that might not be adjustable. Plus the line, well, oh, line voltage is 120 exact right now. But as long as those on the cross hatch pattern, as long as those squares look fine, I you wouldn't notice it. I got that, I don't wanna go there, that's color. Notice how when you go to color information, you get the dot crawl. <laughs> That's the side effect of putting a color signal on a black and white set. So yeah, it is backwards compatible. What if it's a little things like this? All right, so one of the things now, we got the cross hatch pattern up. I'm gonna mess with the yoke uh, adjustments a little bit, see if I can get this better. And we'll go from there. So yeah, it is perfectly centered. The width, like I said, a little bit too much, but it's not adjustable. Uh, play with the centering rings. And uh, I messed with the AGC, which is already dead on where it was supposed to be. I went through all the channels just to see uh, they all came in just fine. Just to the fine tuning for each, so they're right where they should be. That's it. Um, and like I said, judging by how it's behaving with this test patterns, I believe this does have full DC restoration. Uh, we'll find out as soon as I hook a normal signal to it how it behaves. Here's the back installed on the TV, all cleaned up. The only thing happened was it, this sticker was barely held on by like in the center and when I was cleaning it, it actually fell off. I still have it, I'm gonna laminate it and re-glue it back on. Um, these are the only controls on the back or in the set thereof. Uh, vertical hold, vertical sides, horizontal hold, and you have um, the RF AGC, that's it. There's no other controls in this set. And uh, I have a single 
monopole antenna, which is this connection here. The other connection is your ground plane since it's a monopole antenna. But this is the front and it's just a night and day difference. It looked filthy, but that dirt protected everything other than some little scuffs here and there. It's like brand new. The top, look at that, the sides. The blacks are black. They don't change with screen brightness. Just watch. See? Well, I had to take it back apart. Um, I was getting some horrible buzzing on the screen when you have t text and stuff, which, you know, would be typical, but it was like over too much, you know. And luckily, you don't need to do a full IF alignment procedure in some cases like this. Uh, because the picture is razor sharp. It looked great. I just had to adjust these two transformers right here on the screen in the silver cans. Uh, mainly the one up here. As soon as I turned it just to ever so slightly counterclockwise, the buzzing went away. And I adjusted the other one and the audio just got even clearer. And that's it. it, it no more buzzing. Perfect. Easy adjustments. And it was like a bare, hardly even turning. I like that. I was still getting some horrible buzzing as you can hear. So I got it adjusted and it went away and the picture hasn't changed any. All right, I did it. Usually in cases like this, just mark, you know, where you start and count, make sure you make, definitely keep track how many turns you make it. On some in case you need to return it to the original without doing an actual procedure, without the, uh, without the alignment instructions. Just very carefully go around, see what controls affect what. Video was perfect, audio kept buzzing. So in the audio section, I did these two just right. That yellow one right there in the middle of your screen, I backed off a little bit. And the sharpness, the picture remained the same, fine tuning in the same spot. Uh, I'm gonna mute it. Uh, wherever mute is, okay, it's muted. Now, this was a horribly noisy screen, now watch. I got the volume up all the way, you don't hear any buzzing, beautiful. Didn't even need to do an alignment. And yet, it didn't affect this any. It's still nice and sharp. Perfect. See, I love seeing that black level just go black on it. Oh, that was cool. Oh, I didn't see. Yeah, this, this TV works nice. Very nice. So in Creep Show, if you remember that scene with Ted Danson and Leslie Nielsen. Um, okay, let me put it this way. That movie's from 1982. This TV's from 1980. There is the exact TV you see here used in this movie, except it's the one or two year newer version. I say that because if you notice that the controls and knobs on this, it resembles the Chroma Color 2, the late Chroma Color 2s, whereas the one they have in here resembles the entry-level System 3 rotary dial type color sets. But anyway. Well, I have something here, Harry. Yep, see the back's almost Thank identical. Yeah, it's the newer style knobs. Becky. The control knobs are the same, but they're arranged vertically uh, instead of how it is on this one. Somebody! Becky! No! Becky! I really can't say. Hey, Becky! Becky! Hey, 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 Becky!
I see one on, difference. The antenna here, on this one's in the middle. And this and the one on the pictures towards the jacks. Come on, Richard! You can kind of see the knockout where the antenna was installed on the uh, one in Creep Show right here. Whereas this one is in that hole. Interesting. <laughs>